So here we are. Welcome back to Keto and Crime and Thought Crime. Today, part two or three, I'm not sure how long my actual summary of the episode of this is going to be, whether it's going to be one part or two, but welcome to either part two or part three of the Amanda Knox case with my good buddy Michelle here. It's fucking crazy. I just, <laughs> just right, out, right here at the top, I would just like to, I would just like to start out by acknowledging that there's a lot of moving parts here yes this is one of the most uh, intricate deeply deep big cases i think i've ever encountered with a lot going on it spans over seven or eight years and in a way it's still going on um so it's it's weird even though the justice part of it has been settled the italian supreme court has finally ruled on it Mm -hmm. But so we don't think there's ever going to be another prosecution of Amanda or Raffaele, but you know, but the, the mystery around it still goes on. And I think the worst part of it is that there's a dead girl. There's a dead woman, Meredith Kushner, who um, no one really knows who killed her. Right. And her family is just kind of left. I mean, there was there is the one gentleman that was actually sentenced to 16 years he's still in jail right rudy he's, what's his name yeah, rudy he's still in jail uh but was given 16 years for a murder you know that's um that kind of stuff is pretty common in european justice systems where the focus is more on rehabilitation um, and even life sentences in a lot of places. I'm not sure specifically about Italy, but I've I've heard for sure that life sentences in quote unquote life sentences in various uh, other countries are like 25 years or something. Yeah. Um, it's it's just, not it's, a true life sentence. Even right. Even the two sentences that were given to Amanda and Raphael or Raffaele were. 25 28 and 25 years respectively right so they weren't life sentences in in the term that they would be given actual natural life in the usa well yeah in the way that and i um i don't know i don't know how i feel about that um one way or another and that's not really what we're here to discuss (laughs) no (laughs) oh i agree there are some criminals that need to be locked up for the rest of their natural born lives Mm -hmm. because they're a danger to society and there, are, on the flip side of that, there are also some criminals that we here in the United States want to keep locked up for a long ass time, even though they don't necessarily. Yeah, some that I don't are think deserve that. Rehabilitatable, you know, capable of being rehabilitated. Or like nonviolent crimes in general. <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to throw a name out here Charles Manson. We should never have wasted the amount of taxpayer dollars on his butt that we did and kept him alive. They should have went ahead and gassed him you know he was a danger to others he still controlled people on the outside that was proven he was nut job he was a racist he was misogynist he was dangerous it's my understanding that it costs more money to have somebody on the i i don't know all right well we could get into the politics already out of hand (laughs) yeah we could we could we could get into the politics of what it costs to feed and clothe and take care of a prisoner versus you know how much it costs to actually off them yeah you're sure and that depends you know electric chair most states now use lethal injection which i think is more humane and i'm glad but the cost of those drugs and who administers a whole we just need to have a separate political discussion about that so see this is what i'm saying about this case is we're three minutes in and we're fighting and already already <laughs> it's off the rails yeah <laughs> not even about specifically any of this so i did in my attempt to research this come across some message boards where people are just like well i guess some people are just always going to believe that she's innocent (laughs) yeah but and i the, uh, the reason she was found given a reprieve from all this is because of the shoddy amount of evidence that actually pointed to her there was a reason you know i'm probably never going to be able to go to that part of italy after i say this but the italian police in that area 
Perugia. shitty. Yeah, they handled this pretty shitty. Well, pretty the, the wrong kind of police came to the postal. Okay, inspectors. all right. Let's <laughs> let's just yeah. Let's start from the beginning. Let's, let's start at the beginning. Okay, <laughs> Amanda. Amanda Knox was born in 1987 mm-hmm. in Seattle or suburb of Seattle. Her mom was a teacher. Her dad mm-hmm. worked in the uh, finance department for Macy's. Yes. Uh, they they eventually divorced. She remarried. She still lived in a pretty upper middle class type of environment with her and her siblings. But from what we understand, pretty down to earth young lady. Mm-hmm. She worked hard. She decided to major in linguistics. She always had a love for Europe, you know. So. She has a real um, Reese Witherspoon in election vibe about her. Yeah, she does. <laughs> <laughs> she does. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just very into art, uh, mm-hmm. very appreciative of art. She, several video clips I've seen of her stoling the attributes of like uh, the statue of david mm-hmm. that, uh, i believe it who was that is it Raphael? that was michelangelo I think. michelangelo's david mm-hmm. sorry but um just stoling how beautiful that form was and how she wanted to go back and see all those great works of art so wow, she had a lot of dreams yeah 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 oh she loves the david no kidding well she's <laughs> She loves the she loves the D, but in any case, uh, <laughs> D is in David. Get your mind out of it. No, I I followed. I followed. But uh, she actually um, legitimately wanted to go back, so she went to the University of Washington, majored in linguistics, spoke English, uh, I believe German, French and of course later on Italian though Italian was the language that she knew the least of and that's where she wanted to go that was a little weird but, hey, there's um, no better way to learn a language I suppose I mean look as at a the, as a language person myself right right <laughs> I can you know distill the fact of me crossing the border into and li- trying to live a few months in Mexico and being and having to learn the language as opposed to just wanting to learn the language right you know? So anyway, she uh, actually worked three jobs on top of a full mm-hmm. load, saved the money to pay for her own year abroad. So she wasn't a, a mommy and daddy's girl. And at least, you know, they're going to give me everything that I want. I need to work for it. And no, no trust fund baby here. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So she ended up uh, enrolling in a year abroad and ended up, so she ended up uh, relocating to do a year at the university in Perugia, Italy, mm-hmm. where she re- was roommates with Meredith Kushner, a young exchange student from U- United Kingdom, mm-hmm. and two uh, doctors in training or lawyers in training, uh, Italian girls that were also in that program. Which I understand that program there at the university is pretty popular with people from all over the world, not just the United States, but there was a lot of people there from Africa, mm-hmm. from other parts of Europe. Uh, from Australia, from New Zealand, from, you know, so pretty popular multinational destination there in Perugia, so. That's interesting. I'd never heard of it before this. <laughs> me, me either, before this case, I mean, but if you look at the players in this case, mm-hmm. a lot of them were from all over the world, and you had a huge mix of people. Yes. In, in this one little Italian town, mm-hmm. so. So that's where we are. She had a pretty uneventful first few weeks there. Um, when yeah, not, uh, yeah, that really struck me was that this happened very, very shortly after. Yeah. I don't even like, think she finished the semester. School. I mean, it was. I don't know. It was like they moved in, she moved in like August or something. And then it was the first of November. Mm-hmm. That this happened. She was working at a local bar. Mm-hmm. Um, because the owner of the bar actually said that uh, he thought it would be beneficial to his business to have the pretty young American there that spoke several languages. So she was kind of hired he's for not being wrong. an American and, you know. <laughs> he's not wrong. No, he's not. I mean, it's like having, it's just like we talked about with our last case um, with our little cannibal friend from Japan. He, uh, 
you know, it's often what you're not associated with that uh, becomes exotic. And so that's what right. people tend to be fascinated with. And I can see having that working in your. Right. Also though, uh, if it's so such a, like a multicultural area, if she can speak multiple languages, then that's going to mm-hmm. make her better able to do her job. Definitely. definitely. And the guy who owned the bar, I forget his name. Uh, but Patrick Labumba. Lamumba, that was his name from uh from and had yeah and had moved there and opened up the bar uh had a good relationship with all of his employees you know text them frequently pretty personable but then uh when but then there was the fateful night about a week before this happened that um meredith amanda and their other two roommates actually went to a Op, uh, an opera performance and an art gallery and that's where she met her soon-to-be boyfriend Raffaele. Um, you know, the, all the I'm afraid I'm going to butcher it. Celesticito. Uh, Raffaele Celesticito. So, and yeah, she, Celesticito or something. Yeah. She was actually uh, attracted to him because he looked like Harry Potter she said. I, so I did hear that an Italian Harry Potter which is yeah. like a nerd alert. <laughs> yeah. Well, she said she, I've actually heard some interviews with her where she said she had already read the first Harry Potter book in German and she was going to get the second book in Italian to help with her Italian. Mm. And it was during this that she met him. So I can understand uh, why, what her attraction was. So Sure. I didn't realize that that was only a week before. Yeah. They'd only been hanging out like a week and they went from friends to more than friends in just a few days i mean which is i've been 20 before (laughs) yeah i've been 20 (laughs) but yeah they they were hanging out they were having sex they were smoking weed they were you know reading harry potter you know (laughs) everything that you would do everything totally normal uh college shit that was one thing that people seemed real judgy about about that shit and like they thought people were very very quick to say like well i bet she did it because she's loose sexually right because because she likes to fuck yep pretty much she uh in fact the prosecutor and i thought this was weird you have the same person person prosecuting it as you do uh that was the, the lead investigator giuliano magini was the lead investigator on the case and the prosecutor he sounded like a real piece of work oh he was and he was a sherlock holmes fan he was like had read everything like that arthur not, Kenan dole ever ever re- wrote apparently in not real good at sherlock holmes no because <laughs> that was a key part of his investigation into the case because he said because of the proximity of the body Mm -hmm. or and the fact that the body was covered with a blanket showed Mm -hmm. that the killer had to be female because a male killer right would never do that well that's where he's wrong because if you've read anything about criminal pathology and criminal psychology which i have and i know you have too because we are obsessed with serial killers because we're weirdos yeah yeah we know that Anybody that feels remorse for what they just did, like crimes of passion, will usually uh-huh. cover the body because they don't want to look at it. Or, or if it's someone that they like know or have some sort of warm feelings toward. Yeah, they'll cover it because they don't want to do that. Because yeah, um, like a dog that won't look you in the eye after doing something bad. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. This this stuff with the like italian harry potter stuff and the the like investigator who is obsessed with sherlock holmes if that was in like a like a an hbo limited series or something would be like this is heavy-handed yeah it it sounds like the movie clue right yes it'd be like i really am having a hard time getting into this because of these random character traits that feel really made up and yet this, here we are. Yeah, this could, this could easily be made into a Monty Python gag. It, I mean, great. Like, uh, absolutely. And I would almost like to see that. I Yeah, actually, as soon as you said that, I was like, oh. 
<laughs> that would be fun. John Cleese? What's, I was going to say, what's John Cleese up to these days? <laughs> but, uh, but, so yeah, uh, I believe it was November 20th. First. It was November, November 1st. 1st. November 1st, 2007. 2007? Yes, 2007. I do know that much. Yeah. I did come armed with at least that information. <laughs> November 1st, 2007. Mm -hmm. um, Meredith was spending, um, excuse me, Amanda was spending the night with, at Raffaele's. And evidently his apartment, I mean, his father, he was studying computer science. His father was a very rich urologist MD, mm -hmm. you know, type, and had actually Thanks purchased, yep, had ex, <laughs> had, Sorry. had purchased him his own flat so he didn't have to have roommates. But the problem right. was that it flooded a lot. Yeah. And that's a problem. And evidently they were married, uh, Amanda was going to take a shower there that night, but because she had to go to work. But then Patrick had texted her and said, Hey, it's not a lot of reservations, not going to be busy, don't bother coming into work. Uh -huh. And then she sent him a text, which has been was picked up by the prosecutor and the investigators and kind right. of taken way out of context, where she simply said, I will see you later, which is just a common European colloquialism for see you later. Right not I'm actually going to see you later tonight is the way that they were. Right, exactly. Um, yeah, it's just, sure. I, and if there, if there, it would be one thing if there was any other like corroborating stuff. I don't know. So yeah, see you later is fully innocuous or like yeah. is is reasonably, I guess it's not always, but is like, could i think reasonably be assumed to be oh okay great i'll s see you later then <laughs> yep exactly so he was at uh so she was going to shower there but the plumbing went awry and so mm -hmm. she said she was just going to go back to her own apartment shower and come back because she couldn't take a shower there because of his plumbing and he said i'm going to call my father and i'm going to ask him to please send plumbers to fix this plumbing once and for all so yes that happened it's near midnight or near the next morning uh so she goes on goes to her back to her apartment she noticed that the door is open which is weird and then yeah, she i mean yeah but she said to somebody weird. she said normally meredith and their other two roommates were pretty responsible so right. she thought it was a little weird but still went on in this Didn't is notice, where i yeah. i get very confused about the this kind of timeline of door was open because i i had heard kind of two separate things one that she went ahead and went in and was like oh well and then another one that was like it looked like one of the rooms had been ransacked the what what, what i have ascertained is that the front door was not standing open it was just unlocked so when i say open i mean oh. unlocked. and then she went into the bathroom to take her shower and she noticed blood in the sink, blood yeah. on the floor. And that's when she started to get worried. Mm -hmm. So she, she saw Meredith's door closed, mm -hmm. but it was locked and she knocked mm -hmm. on it. She said Meredith would never lock her door. That's just unusual. Now they've only been living together a few weeks. So and there had apparently been some tension. Yeah. Meredith and her had had a few words because it Meredith seemed... was more of a, she's a kind of a bookworm, stayed at home, studied. Whereas Amanda went out and partied. Which is, which feels like, again, just sort of innocuous roommate disagreements. Yeah. And if I was, if I was going to be like roommate to imagine like what kind of disagreements would be like murderous disagreements, it would not be that. Right. No. <laughs> I'm not Even for 20 year olds. No. I'm not going to kill somebody over, you know them coming home late at night or stealing I'm, my soy milk from the fridge yes, or something. I'm gonna like call that. my mom and be real mad about I'm, it. I'm gonna I'm gonna have some strong language for my mom about <laughs> that. Yes. <laughs> but I'm probably not even gonna confront them. Because it's, I don't I, like confrontation. I'm well, weird like that. Well that's not weird and also I'm twenty, being twenty. Let's just remember that everyone involved in this is like twenty or twenty one. Or at least the, right. the two is, women involved. 
which is unusual because we talk about her, you know, tell you about even the European educational system, how much different it is. They're mm -hmm. like her other two roommates were in law school. You know, here in the United States, you wouldn't even be able to apply for law school until you finished a bachelor's degree, which in right. 22, 23. And there, there they were like in their third year of law school or something, which Jesus. was like, which shows, you know, you go straight from high school in Europe to a school that teaches whatever you're going to be. Like, so like a vocation. Yeah. Yeah. You go from high school to medical school in Europe. You skip the whole pre-med thing. And... You know, How would just, you feel if you were like in the hospital and the doctor comes in? And he's like 22. <laughs> well, okay. It would Can be I, weird. It would be weird. Excuse me, little boy. <laughs> Are you lost? <laughs> it, it would be weird. <clears throat> I mean, I'll, I'll admit it would be weird. And I think that's that why is, that, that would never happen here unless they were some kind of prodigy. Because right. you, if you're a foreign doctor and you come here, I know because mm -hmm. I have friends that have had to do this. One was actually, it was actually a vascular surgeon from um, Uzbekistan mm -hmm. and had been through eight years of training there, but it was, you know, starts right after high school. So it was like four years of medical school, four years of a surgery mm -hmm. residency there. But he comes over here and wants to practice. He has to start all over. He has to pretty much go back through the last two years of medical school which is and, so, it's so stupid. Yeah. And then redo a residency and then a fellowship. So he was, he lost about 12 years from having to, from coming over here to practice. So dumb. Yeah. Um, having said that, I just think about myself at 22. Yeah. And no business uh, making any sort of serious life or death choices for anyone, including myself. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but they were lawyers. But, but they we were lawyers. But we see how well the Italian criminal justice system worked in this case. Well, yeah. But I think it was a one-off. I it yeah I would I would, I hope, would so. hope that that's the case, and probably we would have heard a lot more about it in yeah. general. Yeah. If this was like par for the course. Yeah. Well, I have some more. I have some like interesting things to say once we get to that part, but we'll. But okay. Anyway, so the door to Meredith's room was locked and she saw the blood and then she said a mm -hmm. chill kind of ran up her spine mm -hmm. and she's like, something's wrong. So she steps outside, she calls Raffaele and asks him to please come over. He comes over, he sees what's going on and they decide we need to call the police. So uh -huh. he calls the police and they say, now there's different types of police in Italy. Yes. There's regular oh. police and then there's postal inspector police and then uh -huh. there's military police. Yes. Because Perugia was evidently a, a big military stronghold for the Italian army. Uh -huh. So they, he calls the police and, but lo and behold, they send postal inspectors. Listen, you know what? <laughs> Serious postal crime. Yeah. Locked door, blood. Locked door, blood. Call the post sounds, office. Sounds like a job for the postmaster general. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's who they send. And they decide, oh, we're not qualified to handle this. So they call the military police. Having said that, I'm pretty sure that they still like. Touch stuff. Uh, touched things. And instead That's... of just being like, let's wait. They like crowbarred open the door and stuff. That what <laughs> they didn't, they didn't open the door. But what they did do was allow uh, Amanda Raffaele and their other two rooms by this time to just meander around the house and touch whatever instead of let's go outside and we need to police tape this off and not let anybody touch anything right so the investigators get here and then they just allowed these people to mill about the house disturbing evidence you know 2007 not 1957 before we knew better <laughs> exactly I mean we had DNA technology yeah. at this time so finally the military police get there and they actually crowbar down the door to Meredith's room and they find Amanda said she was outside. She overheard some very Italian she didn't quite understand because she was still learning, but she said it sounded very distressed. Yeah. And a lot of voices coming from the bedroom. So she goes back inside and lo and behold, there is Meredith's body with a slit yeah. throat on the bed with a blanket over 
head than over the body. Hey, question. How can you tell if it's distressed Italian? She said, just said it was versus pale by their tones, by their tones. I'm just saying, have you ever heard someone speak Italian? I have. I mean, they always sound upset. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same with German. Germans, to me, the German language, though beautiful, and I have a lot of wonderful friends that are German and speak German, they always mm. sound angry. Yeah. You know, so. But that, probably because she was steady in the language and linguistics was her thing, she could tell it's a little distressed. I'm distressed, as opposed to just the normal distressed sound of Italian. Speakers. Right. So, of course, there, and he starts taking fingerprints. And from what we understand, because of all the pe un people that didn't need to be there milling about, a lot mm. of the evidence was disturbed. The most telling piece of evidence was a thumbprint. Uh huh in Meredith's blood that was found underneath the pillow that her head was on. Yeah. And they did take a, a swat, a, a fingerprint from that. Yeah. And, uh, so basically, um, uh, Roth, both Raffaele and Amanda were let go at that time. The same as her roommates. They mm -hmm. did their investigation. They stayed other places that night. And the next day they were invited to the police station to be interrogated or to be questioned. questioned. And this is where we get into some of the drama around it. Um, a lot of video of them being very playful and romantic in the waiting room of the police station was evidently doing cartwheels and stretching. Amanda bothers me. The, it really bothers me when people sort of assume what like grief is supposed to look like mm -hmm. and then make judgments about someone's guilt or innocence based on how they're responding to this horrible traumatic event mm -hmm. the thing is like someone was just murdered in your apartment i mean it's very likely that she's dissociating a little bit i mean how do you even She's 20. How, right, she's 20. How do you even process this? Yeah, she's she's got, in a foreign country. She's in a foreign country. She's got this boyfriend. That she's overwhelmed. Like, of course they're like hugging and, each other and yeah. being lovey-dovey. And also, cartwheel. If, if I have learned anything about anxiety over these past few weeks, it's mm -hmm. that um, doing some exercise is a, is a, a great way to like use that that energy and if your your roommate has just been murdered in your home yep. you are 20 and you are in a foreign in country and you're about to be interrogated about this yeah you've got some uh pent up maybe anxious energy that needs to get out yeah. so maybe you're gonna do a few cartwheels and you're allowed to still laugh sometimes just because someone died yeah <laughs> And the thing of it is, her roommates had already been questioned, and they said that they thought it was shocking that when they talked about Meredith must have suffered, they said that Amanda actually blurted out, of course she suffered, her effing throat was cut. And they said that was, they thought that was a little strange, but to me, that's just being but, a sarcastic 20-year-old, of course she suffered. Who's an overwhelmed yeah. one yeah. at that. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah, and of course she suffered. She had her throat slit. Of course yeah. she suffered. Like, of you course know? she did. And like, yeah, that, that seems like more. Yeah. And let's remember. More trauma she, brain than. She didn't know any of these girls that well. They had only been together since September. So you're talking well, right. six to eight weeks of knowing somebody, maybe not even that. You're not going to be as traumatized as if it had been your roommate for the entire four years of college. Right. But also. I don't know. All of it track. All of it tracks with with trauma brain for me. I'm no professional, but yeah, I think. But, but I do get very anxious sometimes. <laughs> and I've been known to get up and pay. Yes, when I'm, exactly. I may go to the restroom, ladies' room, a hundred times when I'm stressed because it has that kind of reaction to me. I you know? have a I have a like a stationary spinning bike in my living room that I've just been yeah going to fucking town on when yeah. I feel like I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> exactly. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So her and Raffaele are brought in separated 
Mm -hmm. And over the next two to three days, they're interrogated a total of like 56 hours. Which is, should be criminal. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. And nothing that comes out of that should be admissible. It's, no. It, at that point, people will say anything. Yeah. It, that's uh, the case of the West Memphis Three that I, I could right. have been in three different parts. The guy that they interrogated for that many, for a, a long period of time in, at, at, the mm -hmm. West, at the Memphis Police Department was, had an IQ of 70. So he was mm -hmm. already slow. Yeah. And they literally led him into his confession. Well, right. And then you're, you're like, lack of sleep, oftentimes lack of food and water. Because she said they would not give her water. They would and not just give like, her food. And just like, again, 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 again. No breaks. Again. Right, they, no breaks. At some point. You're going to have to pee. Maybe you just have to pee really bad and you're willing to say whatever you can. So they might let you go right. to the bathroom. And both her and Raffaele ended up Im implicating them like Raffaele implicated her she implicated herself uh -huh. because they continued to hammer in on him about didn't she had you know he said she spent the night she was with me the whole night there's no way she had time to do you know because right. the body you could tell by the status right. of the body it had been a few hours it didn't just happen Mm -hmm. so they kept leading him he said into and then he's like well yeah she left to go take you know a shower and then they made that seem like it was hours before mm -hmm. so he implicated her and he said it was later he felt he was in a trance and they were mm -hmm. leading him into saying it so he just said it sounds like uh like sherlock holmes bro had already made up his mind about yeah. what had happened yeah, I don't know. This would later come out. Even one of the judges on the appeals court would comment on it that he felt that the investigator was rushing to get somebody arrested because it could be very damaging to the economy there because of I all mean, the all the foreign students that come in. Yes, it's yeah. really. I understand why the the pressure that would be on for that. It it always. I shouldn't be surprised. It happens all the time in these stories. Yeah. Or, but because that's all well and good that you got a conviction, but if you get a conviction of someone who didn't do it, then like there's a murderer still out. Yep. <laughs> yep. And then you still have a murderer on your hand. Yeah. And so Amanda said the same thing that at one point she was struck on the on the back of the head by one of the Officer, she didn't understand everything they were saying because they were speaking to her in Italian. They would not provide a, you know, somebody that knew English to talk with her. She said she was struck. She was yelled at, screamed at. It's like they were trying to break her down so she would confess. And finally, she confessed that maybe Patrick did it, her boss, mm -hmm. because Patrick had had kind of a thing for Meredith and that maybe it was, you know, sexual ex exploit that went too far. So uh -huh. they arrested her boss, Patrick, um, as a result of what they, of what uh, Amanda said. Uh -huh. And he was later exonerated because they found no DNA evidence of his anywhere. So he was later exonerated. But she actually implicated her boss. And I, because they had that text message and what does this mean? I'll see you later. You know, I'll see you later. It just means I'll see you later. You it know, means I'll see you the next time I'm at work. So right. they eventually let them go and mm -hmm. then eventually arrested Amanda and Raffaele for the murder. I feel like it was like uh, the next day or something. The next it was day. Very quick. The next day. Now what Amanda did say is that her mom from the first time she called her mother when mm -hmm. it was happening, like the body was still yeah, in yeah. there. That her mother had told her to get her passport, go immediately to the airport, and just come back home. Because uh, her mother did not trust a foreign court system. Which ended up being the absolute a good call truth. in this case. Having yeah. said that, if she had fled the country, they were I don't already, know. already every one of her actions was being scrutinized, and she had yeah, fled. scrutinized for guilt. Right. And like, yeah, had she fled the country? Yeah. This Although, a, I mean... She didn't want to leave Raffaele because he was Italian. He, there was nowhere he could go. 
it was just a, very a different part, part of Italy. Yeah. But also like he's your boyfriend of a week. <laughs> a week. You'll find someone else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But so anyway, they arrested them. Patrick's exonerated because they found no DNA evidence, but that thumbprint uh -huh. implicated another person that lived in the building by the name of Rudy Gwaney or something. But, yeah. Anyway, also Rudy. From, also from Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast, yep. Who had actually fled Italy already and was in Germany. So hmm. that's not suspicious. Well, this is this is exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. This is exactly what I'm saying is he was already out of the country and we have made a judgment based on also the bloody the fingerprint. The bloody fingerprint. So they, they didn't know Rudy, right? No, they, they knew that he hung around the apartments. He lived in the apartments. He still kind of hung around, but he also had a criminal record from uh, Africa for running drugs and that sort of thing. So he was an unscrupulous character at best. And okay. So they arrest they arrest him. They interrogate him. Mm -hmm. They they ex, you know they extradite him back to Italy. They interrogate him, and he said that yes, he did have sex with Meredith that night, but he did not kill her. And mm -hmm. the story he gave is laughable. I mean, really, I could have come up with a much better story, but that he had gotten up to go to the bathroom. He stayed in the bathroom longer than he intended. When he got back to Meredith's room, there was a tall guy standing over her. She was already dead, and the, the guy ran out. Mm -hmm. And he was too scared to, go, to call an ambulance or the police. Why? That was, that was his actual oh. story. Okay, because people would have... But then how did he say that his thumbprint got under the pillow? That they never really... I, they, I couldn't, couldn't find okay. any, any, what, any, any information. information on that. I mean, it was just weird so yeah so anyway he's tried and actually found guilty and sentenced mm -hmm. to 16 years for the murder yes. of Paris Kushner and all this time they're still over here trying Am Amanda and Raffaele the story that the prosecutor's putting out is one mm -hmm. of a sexual tryst a sexual orgy gone wrong again right back to their looseness you know mm -hmm. the American girl is loose and she she twisted the mind of this poor Italian boy. That's exactly how it was portrayed. Mm -hmm. And she spent four years in the Italian prison system waiting mm -hmm. for the trial, if they, in which she was yes. found. They were, they were found guilty. And then she's convicted. She, they're both convicted. Mm -hmm. They sentenced to 28 years for her, 25 years for him. Mm hmm and they are both sent back to the Italian prisons. Now, mm -hmm. why, while in prison, this came out in her book, but mm -hmm. while in prison, she was actually sexually uh, assaulted and sexually abused by one of the guards, mm -hmm. by some of the females in the prison. Mm -hmm. So they, her whole persona, the Foxy Noxy thing, which was a mm -hmm. nickname she had had from high school because from of her, like aggress soccer. her yeah. aggressiveness in soccer. So they twisted that into some perverted sexualized nickname. And so that's the reputation she had, even though it wasn't true. And who cares how many people she slept with? That doesn't make her a murderer. No, that would. <sighs> so first appeal and the conviction is overturned because mm -hmm. of the lack of DNA evidence. The evidence mm -hmm. that they found on the knife w that was hers mm -hmm. should have been there because she lived, she lived in, that, in the, the fucking house uh, and she cooked in the fucking house. So mm -hmm. her DNA was, was supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. And so it was overturned. They were freed and mm -hmm. Actually, her parents got her out of Italy as quickly as they could, mm -hmm. as they should. Yeah. And a few years later, 2013, mm -hmm. they appealed, the prosecution appealed the mm -hmm. overturned thing, uh -huh. got a new uh -huh. trial. Yes. Convicted mm -hmm. again. Yes. And her, she refused to return to Italy. 
Of she course said, she not, did. I'm not going back there. And it would have been up to uh, the Obama administration at the time to extradite her if they had wanted mm-hmm. to. And our current president, Donald Trump, even weighed in on this and said, she's innocent. This is bullshit. Even if they do convict her again, we shouldn't extradite her. I mean, he actually right. said that. And, you know, of course, his whole thing, we don't want an American citizen. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, so the, but the Italian public were calling, was definitely calling for her blood by this point. Mm-hmm. And then she's convicted again. What about Raffaele? He was still, I mean, he had to go back to, they, he was taken back into custody. He got the worst. Was he, was he convicted again as yeah, well? The, they okay. were both convicted again. And it was the same sentences, you know. Mm-hmm. 28 and 26 years mm-hmm. and so they were uh hurt she hired a defense team another defense team to kind of plead her case up to the italian supreme court mm-hmm. and in 2015 the conviction was overturned mm-hmm. and the judge actually put it into it saying that not only am i finding overturning this judgment mm-hmm. i am exonerating both Amanda Knox and Raffaele from yeah. anything to do with this crime. And he is the one that said that he felt the investigation was handled poorly. The prosecution was handled poorly. It ignored the fact there was already somebody that had been found guilty mm-hmm. of this crime because of blood and fingerprint evidence at the, at the scene. Mm-hmm. It was already serving time. There was, no viable DNA evidence connecting either of them and what DNA there was was mishandled by the investigator. Yeah. So, so she yeah. can't ever be prosecuted again, thank goodness. Well, that's good. Um, ha- now, recently, Amanda Knox has gotten married. Mm-hmm. Recently, not to Ralph Bailey. No. Um, But there was some controversy surrounding that because she and her husband tried to crowdfund their wedding, their space-themed wedding, Yep. where they were going to have space puzzles and crazy alien food or something, and people were like, really? You're crowdfunding your... Well, I mean, it makes sense because from what I understand, her family was bankrupted because of of her defense. Well, sure. And and I understand why that might be, you know, but it's still I, I, weird to me. It, it was weird. I'll, I'll admit it was weird. I mean, and, and she does have a quite a career now as a advocate for uh, American citizens prosecuted mm-hmm. in other countries, and she also is an advocate for preventing things like sex shaming, which happened to her. Mm-hmm. And uh, she's become a true crime commentator for a lot of major networks. Mm-hmm. So she's, there should have been enough money to fund that, fund that wedding. So I see what you're saying. I mean, I, I'm not saying that it's weird enough that it's like, <laughs> that Alien. Means that she was guilty, but like, just, it's like, read the room. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and she's also produced the documentary that appeared on Netflix recently about and her about her mm-hmm. about her case not necessarily about her but about the case mm-hmm. and raffaele himself you know completed his degree had a career mm-hmm. in it but is now a true crime host for an italian television network mm-hmm. so at least there's that i guess yeah and then so all right so where do where do we fall on I think I think they got the right person. I think Rudy, I think he did it. I, I think so. he's serving. I don't think he's serving enough time. But um, who I feel for in this case, though, is Meredith's family. They never really got any closure. I, I, I think they feel that the two, two people involved got away with it somehow. Uh-huh. And I understand because that's coming from an emotional place. But yeah not being connected to the case you and i can look at it more rationally and say there wasn't any evidence that connected raffaele or amanda to this crime Do- but yet there was plenty that connected rudy and rudy was found guilty do we think that he worked alone or had an accomplice i believe it was a one because there was no other 
DNA, from what I read, there was no other DNA found in the house other than his that the other should have been there. It was the people that yeah. lived there. Some of Raffaele's was there, but, you know, he came over to visit Amanda, so it should have been there. And the evidence that they were talking about was found in common areas, like the kitchen, on the kitchen mm -hmm. knife. The only way it got into her Meredith's bedroom was from transfer from the object mm -hmm. from a common area into her room. The only evidence actually found in the room, like on the bed, the bed clothes, her clothes, was Rudy's. Mm -hmm. They did say they found a small amount of DNA on a bra clasp. Oh, yeah, the missing bra clasp. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how to explain that. I know she hung out with Amanda at the bar when she worked. Having worked in the hospitality industry, I know that my bra strap was popped many many times by men Solid. at the restaurant it is so i'm saying that's probably what happened you know and maybe she did have sex with patrick and that's how it happened but i don't think that one little piece of dna on a bra class convicts somebody of murder though right especially when they all hung around together mm-hmm so that's my opinion. I could be dead wrong, but that's just my opinion. You know, uh, yeah, I do feel bad for poor Meredith and her family. Yeah, but I think that the person that did it's in jail. I think you're probably right. And I guess they have to understand that that's their closure. You know, that Amanda and Raffaele didn't do it. And they shouldn't be held accountable for it. And as to them making a career off this case, what the hell else are they going to do with their lives? They're always going to be known as Amanda and Raffaele from this case. Well, right. And I mean, the thing is, she's doing like advocacy work. Yeah. She's trying to help other you know? Americans that are and abused like, in other countries. You know, Raffaele did open his own IT consulting firm and ran that and then got the gig as the true crime commentator. I mean, I had a, even if I, my business was successful and I got tapped to host a crime show, I'm probably going to close my business and go do that because that's fun and that's interesting. <laughs> because that's fun and interesting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Also, someone who has spent time in prison having been convicted of something that they probably didn't do probably makes for an excellent true crime commentator. Yeah. And probably has a lot more empathy for people and more of the a accused, willingness, yeah. yes, and more of a willingness to take into account all the evidence as That's opposed it. to having knee-jerk reactions about definitely that person did it. Because you and I, we're a perfect example. We do true crime stuff, but we always seem to rely on ourselves with the victim, as you should. And when the evidence starts to point that way, oh, they did it. They did it. Oh, yeah. That's my opinion. But, you know, him, he might be able to look at, I mean, we know they didn't do it because this case has gone on for so long. But if this was a fresh case that we were reporting on, mm -hmm. would we have the same opinion? And I think with someone like that, you have the ability to say, well, 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 you have to look at this in two different ways. You know, they have that rationality. Yeah. Weirdly, I this wasn't really on my radar when it was happening probably because I'm about the same age as her. And so I was 19 mm -hmm. and uh, therefore I couldn't see anything outside of six inches in front of my face right. <laughs> on account of being 19. Yep. Um, I mean, like I'm, I'm sure that I knew a little bit about it, but I don't think, I don't feel like I had an uh, opinion one way or another. I just, Honestly, yeah, I heard that there was an American that was arrested for the murder of a British mm -hmm. woman in Italy. I said, oh, well, we'll see how that turns out. But then I didn't really catch on to it till she was convicted and then set free and then so convicted like, again. And, years later. And that's when it kind of blew up. Yeah. As far as being over here. So we have to look at it. For all the notes, I mean, she was, she's hated in Europe. She said that she would never go back to Italy. can't say I blame her, but in 2018, she actually did. Mm -hmm. She went over to help another American accused in Italy. Mm -hmm. And so she put herself in harm's way because there's probably still some angry people over there. I'm sure. And, you know, 
so she she you know she went back over there to do a an advocacy, some advocacy work but any career she has is going to be as a result of this case it has to be because even though they were found not guilty that's still if they if you google her that's all you're gonna see well right yeah yeah i mean i can't imagine like amanda knox going into like hr yeah and trying to apply you know applying for a job as an interpreter because she has the linguistics degree and then them googling her that's all they're gonna see and they're probably not gonna hire it, you know? yes being too famous is it doesn't make you a great interpreter no. i so mean you, like even if your interpreting is great yeah. it's you're supposed to as an interpreter it's like you're not even there yep and if you're infamous or famous yep no one can forget that you're there i i, I hear a lot of true crime people say well i think she's a narcissist yeah well, she may be maybe doesn't make but, her a murderer no but i say to those people you're a narcissist because you're on youtube trying to make a career of it i'm a narcissist because i'm on youtube and on stage trying to make a career of it same could be said for you you know we're on youtube and you I do comedy on it. stage too so everybody's narcissist to a certain point and she yeah. has to be because she has to make herself relevant because she has to make a living yeah um oh i did also see that she posted an instagram recently in her italian prison clothes hmm. which actually look really comfortable <laughs> yeah I think it's like an, one of the the anniversary maybe of her release or her. Or I don't her, know, it, but it was like dark gray sweatpants and like, or like a nice light gray sweater. Yeah. Well, her book, like, oh, real cute. The book that she wrote actually went into a lot of detail about her prison life, and that's where we found out that she had been sexually abused in which prison. Is, which is horrible, and I am a firm believer that even even criminals in prison do not deserve that no no um and her law once she finally she was scared to tell her lawyer when she finally told her italian lawyers they reported it to the ministry of prisons and that that guard was removed from duty thank goodness they they did handle it that's really excellent and that actually gives me a lot of hope that this was kind of a one-off situation where yeah some small town cops kind of didn't yeah I wonder how many like other murder cases there had been in this area because that's a common thing in the United States as well where when a murder happens in a small town where nothing has ever happened the police force is like out of their depth like they just yep. don't have the training or experience to know how to like work a scene appropriately and like preserve evidence whatever not through any fault of their own I mean they just yep it's just same, a new experience same thing happened with the west memphis three i go back to that right. case because i did so much research on it they missed that invested the west memphis arkansas police force and the memphis mm -hmm. tennessee police messed that up royally mm -hmm. and they were offered help from the fbi and they should have turned it over to the fbi yes but they didn't because for so i they're it's baffling to me the way that it's i feel like it's gotten better over time where police forces are more willing to like work together yep. and share information and stuff but so many so many like prolific killers have been able to continue killing for longer than they should have been able to simply because police forces would not share information and so they're you know yeah every place in the every small town in the state thinks they had two yep. murders when really it was the same person and if everybody had just like i don't know yep. picked up the phone and, and been like hey this weird thing happened yep. golden state killer golden state killer is my go-to for, for yeah, that. he was he was a a, a a cat burglar in northern california no one ever mm -hmm. in two or three little cities around there yeah. no one compared notes and he was a cop in one of them uh-huh and then he moved down to Southern California, started breaking in houses and then raping people. No one bothered to compare notes. I know. No one and bothered then, to compare notes. And then years later, we have a true crime podcaster married to Patton Oswald. I know. Michelle McNamara, who actually God rest her. Yes. God rest her. 
who actually cracked the case and put two and two together together mm -hmm. with a retired uh los angeles county sheriff's deputy they put two and two together and actually connected the the whole string yeah. of crimes which is um yes that's that is that is the case that i was i had in yeah. mind when i was when i was saying that it's so and, and, uh, and zodiac particularly... zodiac they zodiac. never call it zodiac never will catch zodiac because no one would compare notes that's a great movie though have you ever seen yeah the movie yeah with Al Pacino. Excellent. yeah that's good excellent um yeah i had yeah i don't know i feel like i had a point but it's it's gone it's sorry sorry no no not your fault but i agree i think the same small town politics that yeah oh, yes that's that's what it was <laughs> is in play there is it in the united states this is would may not have been any different if it was the british citizen killing the american citizen in the united states in a small town the the right. the, the outcome may not have been any different right and it's so much easier to point the finger at someone that is not a citizen of your country. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, it's just it, it's very easy to want to like other a person who committed a violent crime and and say like oh well someone who's been around here for a long time would never have done that. It must be yeah. it must be the interloper that came in recently yep. that did it a lot of that small town small town prejudice i mean mm -hmm. that's how I, I don't even, I, and sometimes it's prejudice it's I, not prejudice it's not prejudice like black versus white or yeah it's, versus it's, white. it's prejudice it's more i know just, them he's right. a good old boy he's a good, he's a good just, old girl i think it's just easier yeah it's just really really hard to take in the fact that i don't know that someone close close to you or close to your culture or whatever did it although right. i guess it turns out that the guy who did it was also yeah not it's, italian no but in a town that's mostly immigrants or exchange mm -hmm. students or whatnot that's to be expected mm -hmm. there wasn't a whole lot of native Ita native citizens of that of italy and that particular town there from what i could understand it's That's mostly kind of like nashville there's very few native nashvillians say. you know you're one i'm, I'm one yeah but i'm not i mean i come from out i came from went to alabama to california then california to to nashville so you know it's it'd be like that <laughs> you know so. right but also yeah an established person even from mm -hmm. another place versus a, a you know exactly a brand new person and also it's um like a, a young pretty girl it makes for a very sexy murder suspect it does you know and the fact that's, that she that's was... so much more salacious that like and by the italian stand i'm not gonna say it's italian i think it's by that prosecutor and investigators and i still think it's weird he was both uh, it is weird but i yeah uh, by his standards, how things happen. By her, his standard, she was a dirty slut murderer. Dirty and, slut murderer, but and that a dirty slut murderer makes for such a better story than than African immigrant gets mad and kills right kills her during sex gone bad or whatever it was right. Well, and you, I, I just we expect most of the time men are the murderers <laughs> right a a pretty young white american is the murderer is just a much more Sexy. salacious interesting story yeah and yeah. I, I heard just today actually i was listening to a different podcast um th that apparently the love of true crime in italy is huge and like more so than even here I can imagine uh, and then a big a big story like that just gets a mm -hmm. lot of good ratings and a lot of good money maybe he was trying to you know, further his own career by letting maybe. Him buster you know or I'm maybe paint this is an orgy yeah. gone wrong or i think probably 
also he probably thought of himself as like the Sherlock Holmes of the situation with really good instincts. And he's yeah. just he's just got a hunch, Tracy. Yeah. And that hunch is absolute bullshit. <laughs> I honestly we feel terrible for yeah. Meredith and her family. Um we it's feel concerned. because they're always left out. They're always left out of any story. We didn't even mention them that much. I mean Right. They're really left out of anything covering the story. It's all about Amanda Raffaelli, Amanda Raffaelli, then Rudy. Right. Although at the end of the day, like they weren't in the country. No, they weren't. Place it, you know. You know, they were. The British government couldn't even do anything to help them because even though she was a citizen, it happened in another country. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and then the defendant was yet from another country. Both defendant, two of the three defendants. So it's like it's like the UN of murder. It is. <laughs> it is really sad. Awful. But uh, that's where we stand. She can't ever be prosecuted, at least for, in Italy, for it. And she's innocent, as far as we know. As far as we know. Although, apparently, according to some message boards on the internet, uh, well, there are Amanda Knox truthers. There yeah. are truthers for everything, I guess. Yeah. You should see the comments on my video when I did West Memphis 3. There were people that, because I literally came out saying, I don't know. I don't know if they, they got away with it. I don't know if they did it. Because the mm -hmm. it could have right. been either way, but I had so many people preaching to me saying they're definitely guilty and got away with it. Or, you know, they were innocent, you know. But then the whole time I'm saying, somebody killed those three innocent little boys. Right. Where are they and where are they, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Well, that that ended on a down note. <laughs> it did. It did. Anyway, thank you so much, everyone, <sighs> for tuning in. We'll be back soon with another True Crime case. If you want to support podcast or channel, links are down below. Until next time. Bye. Oops. Shut off the recording here. <laughs>